And I will now pass the microphone on to Sasha. He will explain something about acoustic drum modeling. Thanks a lot, Urs. My name is Sasha. I'm part of the UHE developer team and currently a bit into acoustic drum synthesis modeling research. Um, I've I've written current situation because the current situation is mostly like um, there's e-drum kits and there's software-based um, uh, drum um, sampling software. And it's very popular and people like it. And um, mostly composers, musicians, engineers, um, they like the sound of sampled libraries because they are pretty realistic from an audience perspective. But um, sometimes there's a problem when you sit behind a kit. It just doesn't feel that much of, of realistic as you would have um, like a, like a real, realistic acoustic drum kit. Sometimes when you play a snare roll or you're doing cymbal swells, um, you hear that um, there's a repetitive triggering um, um, event. Uh, there's events that, that all sound the same and all alike. They don't really interact with your playing style and with the actual instrument in front of you. And that is something that we try to counteract by using Synthesis. And um, um, as it says, we imitate the sound and the natural feel and playability like on an acoustic kit. And that is because we synthesize everything in real time. That is quite, a, quite an obstacle and quite a hard task to do right. And we, we're just getting started, but we currently showed you something um, which is already possible in our architecture and um, just press one, okay. Um, what we currently have is this piece of software that is, a, that is one instance of our modeling uh, machine and we subdivided um, the different drum parts into smaller fragments. Like the snare drum, we have a model of the membrane um, which mimics the, the travel of, of sound along the surface um, by using um, a sophisticated mesh of delay lines that pass all the wave fronts onto to, to, to the rim and backwards. And we have a model of the shell where we mimic uh, specific materials. And um, yeah, Hans can play some, some snare rolls, perhaps. That is the, the synthetic model as we have now. And when you... Yeah, I think one can already hear it on the bus rolls that there's no, no single event triggering going on. It's all a wash of sounds, and this wash is created by the model interacting with your playing style, and there's no single shot triggering event like you would have in a, in a drum library. And you can put the same on the, on the perhaps on the right cymbal, on the tom. Yeah. They, they sound still a bit trashy because we're just getting started with symbol modeling. And, um, but as we said, we, it's, it's quite a long road before us and um, I think we will succeed in the end. Um, what we call fundamentals is, as, as I've said, um, a technique that, that is based on delay lines and on simulating the actual physics um, behind such an instrument. And uh, we, we have um, virtual models of a beta, of an exciter, of sticks, and, and, and other objects, whatever. Um, we mimic um, all kinds of felt devices, of hard devices, and we have a model of snare, of snare wires underneath the, um, the resonant uh, membrane, and uh, it's all interactive. And yeah, go onwards here. And there's a lot of challenges, as I said. It's, it's quite, quite a rocky road before us. And in order to, to have a realistic model, in order to, to have it less artificial as it might perhaps sound at this stage, um, we have a lot of research ongoing right now. And um, there's a lot of CPU consumption 
um, all over the place right now. We're, we are the CPU sucker company, uh, as you might know, but um, in the end, it's, it's always about sound quality. And of course, we, we try to, to optimize our stuff so that it runs really in real time on most machines, but it's already quite okay, I think. Um, there's a couple of stuff missing right, right here now. We don't have any microphone modeling. We don't have any room simulation going on. And um, there's a couple of instruments also still missing. We have toms, we have snares, we have kick drums. And, yeah. and we're currently working on the, on the hi-hat model and to, to offer a smooth transition. Yeah, it's, I started this um, a couple of days ago and it, um, I think it will take some while, but I think the snares are already quite, quite good. And um, yeah, let's see where we end up. Um, where we end up is something that is also up to you as the community, that's why we're here. Um, we want to get in touch with people, we want to talk about future projects, not only this one, but of course other projects as well. We want um, to, to have your, your view, your, your outlook on, on something where we could together um, form a new kind of instrument that not only does acoustic modeling, but also synthetic modeling, um, simu uh, circuit simulation stuff. Maybe one could put it into a, into a product, maybe not. We don't know where we end up, where, if we have a drum machine, if we have a sequencer. We don't know yet, and that's why we're here, so get in touch with us, and uh, I pass this mic on to us, who does other sophisticated stuff. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sasha. So, the other thing you heard uh, was an emulation of the famous uh, Sequential Circuits Pro 1, which was uh, this synth that was used on the first Yazoo albums. And, um, yeah, we're working on, on the, on, on an, uh, yeah, hopefully, very accurate emulation of it. And, the interesting thing about the Pro 1 is, in my opinion, it's the most difficult to emulate synth. It's not a mini MOOC. The mini MOOC is um, difficult to do, but the mini MOOC has a modulation range of like two octaves. The Pro 1 has a modulation rate of 12 octaves at audio rate, and it's really, really a challenge. So what it is about is figuring out how the Curtis chips work how the electronics in it uh, interact, um, and how far we have to go with it. Like, how much CPU will it have to take to sound authentic, or can we do shortcuts? What, what do people actually really perceive in the end about um, analog security? And uh, the other thing we're interested in is uh, part tolerances. Um, we want to not just uh, build one profit one. We want to build many profit ones that can be calibrated differently and uh, can be built out of different um, Curtis chips. So um, we do a two-stage development. I try to be quick now because the others want to play. Um, what we do first is we are going to come out with a with a freeware plugin or researchware plugin, as we call it, um, where people can give us their feedback on what they hear in it. It's all about the filter model. And then later on in the year, we hope to have a final product with it. So we are again involving the community. We are actually starting a blog about analog modeling. Uh, so we get other developers involved as well. We do polls, we get audio examples from other people who own Pro Ones. And we want to study as many individual synths as possible, so which is like the syntax has uh, the same filter chip, or uh, uh, the uh, Krumer Spirit has the same oscillators, and so on. Um, so this is what's coming out on Monday as a freeware. It's a stripped-down version of the Pro One or Repro One, as we call it, <laughs> and. Um, it's calibrated to sound pretty much like our hardware pro one, uh, just has less features. And it's got five different filter algorithms, which you can see there in the bottom, uh, this is right, right? Um, you can um, switch between the filter models, and these filter models are based on different kinds or different ways to compute the security. 
And um, as you know, there was a lot of talk about why does Diva use so much CPU when others don't? And um, it's all about how accurately you model the electronics. And um, so in this synth, we have very accurate ways to model the electronics, and we have not so accurate ways. The not so accurate ways, um, of course, use less CPU, but you will also hear that it sounds different. There is a difference in sound, and it's perceivable, and the interesting thing will be which one will the people out there pick? You know, which one will they prefer? And this is what we're gonna uh, do this about, or make this about. Um, the other thing that we're interested in is, as I said, power tolerances, and what does two profit ones that sit next to each other uh, make them sound different? And they do, they do sound different, and it's stuff like the climate, the humidity, the temperature, it's uh, the actual power tolerances. If you look into a data sheet from a SEM chip, there's like 5% power tolerances in every section. It's, it's amazing, it all changes the sound. And then there's, of course, wear and tear. Some of these things are really old. And um, if you have your, your Pro 1 in the, in the basement for like 10 years, it will sound different. You will need to have it repaired, and you will need to have it calibrated. The people who calibrate things calibrate them differently. It's, you know, so there is every, every single analog synth is its own individual. And um, this is also something that we want to respect in the way we work on this. Um, so what we, for instance, what we will do is like, we have like loads of Curtis chips, we'll just swap them in this one unit and then calibrate uh, our software accordingly. And um, yeah, so the other thing is, what we're showing at the booth is like a little bit more, we're almost done with the basic model. It doesn't have a sequencer yet, but that's going, going to come as well. And we did experimental features. We do um, signal outputs, for uh, which you can choose from like eight sources, or no, no more, I think 13 sources inside the synth, um, which we interface with the expert sleeper stuff with our with the Eurorack modular. Um, we have inside like hidden parameters that we use to um, create all the different part tolerances and whatsoever, and we have a preliminary user interface of it. So you can come to our booth, you can hear it. I think it sounds amazing. It's a completely different thing. It's different than DVAR. It's not about smoothness. It's about raw analog pressure. And so the outlook is going to be here. It's going to be a strictly monophonic synth that um, I hope will be respectfully preserved in, uh, in virtual form. We try to do I.O. connectivity. Tim depends a little bit on the, on the uh, plug-in interfaces. Um, we will have an emulation of not just one Pro One, but different ones. We will have an H knob. Some people will not be happy that this thing is going to be noisy and stuff. So um, you can make it new, and then it sounds hopefully cleaner. And then there's the other idea. If we have this pun with the Repro One, we can also do a Repro DG or Repro DC or Repro B. We will see. And um, well, the other thing, we don't know when it's finished yet, and we don't know what it will cost. But um, it's going to happen this year, I hope. And that was our 20 minutes. <laughs>